Well, hello and welcome to Jonathan from the Heart. I'm Jonathan Asley of jonathanasley.com, and I'm so excited to be doing this short video for you today. Our topic, a badass reaction to when he pulls away. Badass. <laughs> All right, really quickly, if you're brand new to my YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you can be notified of new videos. And if any time during this video the content resonates with you, please hit that like button so I can be seen in the YouTube algorithms. Really quickly, these are my weekend videos I shoot out on my balcony, very similar to the videos in my private group called Midlife Love Mastery. This is a group where you can have direct access to me on a regular basis. And depending on the questions you ask in the group, I shoot personalized videos just for you. So check out the link below to uh, uh, my group uh, called Midlife Love Mastery. All right, let's talk about a badass reaction way to handle if a guy pulls away, disappears, goes, goes silent, all those things that you hear about, breadcrumbs and whatnot. You know, the reality is when, when an individual begins to invest in another individual, and you begin to bond with that individual and you start to develop a friendship, you start to develop a connection, you start to develop feelings, you have emotions for a person. It can be incredibly painful to experience when someone starts emotionally pulling away. They, not just physically pulling away, but also emotionally pulling away. And I think we should address both the physical and emotional. The physical is when they actually stop communicating with you that's a sign that they've pulled away, pulled back, something they've gone silent. Doesn't necessarily mean they've ghosted yet, and we'll talk about that in a moment. And then there's the emotional pulling away, which might have happened prior to the actual pulling away. In other words, they're, they're, you can just get that sense that they're just not leaning in emotionally into the relationship. And that can wear on our hearts emotionally. It can wear on our hearts emotionally because the challenge is also that the number one emotional health issue facing most people is I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, and I'm not likable. So when someone starts pulling away either emotionally or physically, it can trigger our own stuff to say, what's wrong with me? In fact, dating triggers this like nobody's business. And we're going to talk about that in a second as well. But when you've started to invest in someone and they begin to pull away, it can be incredibly painful. I know you've been there, I've been there as well. And we have to address the real monkey in the room. I mean, we have to address the monkey in the room. And that is the dysfunctional dating practices today. I'm gonna repeat that, the dysfunctional dating practices today. In fact, it almost occurs to me that dating is a relatively new phenomena that hasn't been around for that long. It's probably only been around for 50 or 60 years because if you think back hundreds of years ago, you know, a lot of people like to think of the idea of courtship, you know, of getting to know each other, getting to know each other, sitting out in the patio, drinking mint juleps together and getting to know each other while you're sitting on a, a um, a chaise lounge or something like that or chaperone dates you know what the interesting thing about that do you realize that that all used to last a couple weeks when a man and woman wanted to have sex together they oftentimes got married really fast they barely knew each other from a, a, a real connection perspective. Not necessarily, now, they might have known each other's families, they might have known each other's friends, because for the most part, we used to connect with people in our tribes, in our villages, our towns, or our workplace, okay? So there was a level of familiarity, and the, date, and the process, I was about to say dating, but it wasn't dating, the process was like that. Now it's a whole different ball game out there especially because of these devices, we are being introduced to people we wouldn't otherwise know in our daily lives and we're meeting total strangers. And the challenge when, when it comes to meeting total strangers is we know very little about them. We don't know their family background. We don't know their friends when we're meeting a total stranger. We don't know much about their lives. In fact, a lot of people keep their lives secret. You know, like, like you meet someone and you're like, oh, what's your Facebook page? Well, I don't want to give you that information yet. I barely know you. It's kind of that stranger danger thing going on. And yet what fascinates me, and I started to laugh, is human beings will engage in sex without barely knowing another person. I'm gonna repeat that. Human beings will engage in sex barely knowing one another 
without the understanding also that we bond through sex not necessarily men bond through sex but women bond through sex so when you've had a guy that's come on strong he's into you he's expressed a lot of affection he's maybe been romantic in the early stages of dating and you actually start to let this person in it can be incredibly incredibly painful when they start to pull away and I want to address what to do when that happens and yet we have to as I said before address the bigger monkey in the room and that is humans don't really know how to get to know one another at a deeper level and again when we're meeting total strangers this can be very difficult this is why I'm an advocate for radical honesty right from the get-go by being upfront of what you're looking for by asking deeper questions I call it radical honesty asking deeper questions but Jonathan all the other dating coaches tell me not to interview guys because that's gonna scare them away folks you want to scare away the wrong guy not that not that asking deep questions if it if it scares someone away or if it feels overwhelming to someone or if they feel turned off by it what does that say about the guy and let's not forget the guys who lead with sex. I have a client right now, she started to date a guy and all, all he wants is sex, 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 sex. You know, I mean, all his communication is that. That is, you know what, listen, what does it say that we can, okay, let me rewind for a second. Obviously, if men feel they can do this, it must be working for some of them. I'm gonna repeat that, if men feel they can do this, it must be working for some of them because I, I'm gonna say the value of sex, the, air, the, the barrier to entry is almost minimal. In fact, we've adopted a three date rule that if someone hasn't had sex by the third date, they're, they're moving on to someone else. And I'm here to say to operate from a different perspective. In fact, if you follow my work, you know, I always say this before you have sex with a guy read the book eight dates by doctors John and Julie Gottman read it together because this will build intimacy with each other you can actually get to know each other at a deeper level because the real challenge today is that when the reason why someone is pulling away is because the roots of trust haven't been established in the relationship the roots of trust okay now let me share with you five roots of trust I talk about in my private coaching. By the way, there's a link below to schedule a free discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. But the five roots, the five roots are emotional connection, economic agreement, social activities, hobbies, mutual interests, family and friends, and intimacy that's both physical and emotional intimacy. Those roots are incredibly important that need to be developed in the relationship for it to have any legs for when there's going to be conflict, when there's going to be challenges. Because here's the thing, what, what happens to a tree in a hurricane wind without roots? It's going to blow away and that's what's happening in dating today is human beings are spending so little time developing these roots to actually strengthen the relationship because here's some of the reasons why a guy might pull away. He might have chaos going on in his life. He might be going through a contentious divorce. He might have issues at work. He might have issues with his children. He might have physical issues going on. These are all some of the reasons that cause men to pull away from the relationship because they're overwhelmed dealing with their problems and there hasn't been enough trust built in the relationship to actually lean in and say, I want my help from this person who's now beginning to become my partner. In fact, humans spend so little time developing partnership with one another. And that's what my, my whole coaching program, listen, I know a lot of my contemporaries, they got married young, they, you know, they got married young and they're trying to sell you on the fantasy because they have that, that idyllic relationship. When you're in midlife, it's a whole different ball game. It's a whole, it's a mess out there. And to operate from that naive place that most men are just going to, you just have to sit back in your feminine energy and the guy will claim you. 
is nonsense. In fact, a lot of the rhetoric out there encourages women that when a guy pulls away, just go about your daily life, pull back in your feminine energy, go back to doing what you're doing, and the guy will gravitate towards you because he's gonna start to miss you. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. When he pulled away from you, how did that make you feel? It made you feel frustrated. Might make you feel, um, might make you feel rejected. Might make you feel angry. So, if you're thinking you'll do the same to him because it's going to make him run for you, think of what he might be thinking: frustration, disappointment, anger, rejection. Now, I'm not suggesting. So he's already pulled away. You don't need to pull away because he's already pulled away. You don't need to give him space, he's already taken space. What you can do is take charge of your life and that's what we're gonna lean into right now. By the way, my t-shirt says, don't be a salty bitch. By the way, for those of you who know, my son who passed away, his nickname is Salty. Um, so I have all these salty t-shirts, salty mugs, things like that, so I'm wearing that in his honor. Partially because Connor one of the chapters in my book called What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? Chapter five is called Don't Let Anyone F With Your Chi. And why I'm sharing this with you, and it so fits with what we're going to talk about today, is that, and I'm coming back to my son Connor, he had this ability to not allow other people's opinion of him affect how he felt about himself. That's where this chapter comes from. Don't let anyone F with your chi. And I want you to operate from the place of, okay, he's done this, okay? What am I going to do about this? What am I going to do about this? Now, you can do nothing, but how does that feel? And by the way, weeks go by, weeks go by, weeks go by. How does that feel? Because you'll be thinking about it. So I'm here to encourage something where we cut to the chase much quicker. So I want to share with you, if you've noticed that the guy has pulled away a little bit, let's differentiate between the guys you're just starting to date versus someone you've been in a relationship a little while, okay? Someone you just start to date, it's very natural because most of the time we're dating people where we think of each other as maybes, as maybes. In other words, I don't know if I like this person yet. It takes a roughly about 100 hours of face-to-face -face time to actually really get to know someone at level one, at state, at level one, it takes about 100 hours. So if you're not reached that point, very natural men pull away and we'll talk about what to say to those guys. I wanna talk about if you're in a little bit more seasoned relationship, what to do, what to say. And what I'm about to share is a very badass, badass way to do this, okay? So I'm gonna put on my trusty glasses Here's my notes, bump, 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 badass way to... So what, here's what I encourage my clients to do is to be proactive. Being in your feminine is not being proactive. Now people will tell you that if you're being proactive, that's being masculine. Who, who gives a crap what definition, masculine or feminine? What you wanna do is take charge of your life. Take charge of your life, okay? And what you can say to a man if he pulls away is something along this lines. You probably send it in a text message, but it could sound something like this. I'll use my name, for example. Hey, Jonathan, I'm sensing you've had a change of heart exploring a fully committed relationship with me because it seems you've pulled back or pulled away. While it's quite possible you might just be busy, it's not like you to go silent and I'm checking in to get a sense of where your head is at. Can you let me know you're okay? Uh, warmly, you know, Suzanne, or what your name, okay? Now, why I like this is it, it, it requires, if, if he genuinely, and I'm assuming you've had sex together, and if he genuinely cares about you, he's going to respond, and it requires him to look in the mirror and say, what am I doing here? What am I doing here? Now, by asking, are you okay? instead of where are we at in our relationship. And by the way, you've, I've, kind of, I've, I've kind of weaved the two together. I'm sensing you're not interested in exploring a fully committed relationship with me, so you're addressing that, but you're ending with are you okay because that gives him a, that gives, you're wanting to know, hey, I haven't heard from you. Are you in a ditch somewhere? Are you in a ditch somewhere? 
By the way, my coffee mug says, sometimes you forget you're awesome. And this is your reminder. And I want to remind you that an awesome person takes charge of their relationship destiny. They take charge of their life. And so coming back to this script, by sharing this, it forces him. It doesn't force him. That's not fair. It gives him an opportunity to respond. What's really going on? Now, here's the thing. Nine out of ten times, he's done. Okay? He is done. He just hasn't told you he's done. He's too much of a, a wuss to tell you he's done. This will force that conversation. And it probably will give you, he'll give you some BS excuse of why he's pulling away. He's got work issues. He's got family issues. He's got this issues. And he can't devote to a relationship. And he's not ready for a relationship. That's the usual line. Now, there's exceptions to the rule. And if he genuinely cares about you, he's going to say, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I've just been really busy. You mean a lot to me. I, I really, I'm not, I really want to apologize for being a little bit distant. Hey, do you want to get together for dinner on Friday night? Or do you want to do this? That's what a guy will do if he genuinely cares about you and wants to explore a relationship. He'll be going, now you might be saying, well, Jonathan, some men will react negative to this. Think about the men who will react negative to, the, to this. The controlling men, the selfish men, the misogynistic men, the patriarchal men. Those men will respond negatively because they want to be in control of the entire relationship because they want a person at their beck and call. And that's not who you are. You are not at someone's beck and call. You are in charge of your relationship destiny. This is why I want you to check out a couple books First off, I definitely want you to check out the book Personhood, Personhood by Lee, I can't pronounce his last name. I want you to check out this book. I want you to check out the book, The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F. And lastly, I want you to read the book by Joe Dispenza. That's Mark Manson, by the way. Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. And why I'm sharing these books today is because a real badass, badass response <laughs> is to... Be in charge to take charge of your life. That is not masculine. That is not feminine. That is called empowerment. <laughs> empowerment. And I want you to be empowered in your life by leaning into this message to, to push a conversation. Nine out of ten times, he's going to give you some you know wussy reason what's going on. And then one out of ten times, I'm guessing, and by the way, I'm making up these numbers, he's going to actually go, He's going to lean into, I'm really sorry, and please forgive me. All right? That's what most likely will happen to the guy who genuinely cares about you. Okay, I think you get a gist of where I'm going here. Folks, I encourage you to take charge of your relationship destiny. Do not give it to the guy. You are in charge of your destiny, not the guy. All right? Okay, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Please post a comment below if this resonated with you. If you have anything you'd like to add, I'd like to hear about it. If you think uh, you have a different script, please write it out as well. If you like my t-shirt, your mug, my mug, please let me know. We're going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more. Oh, wait, 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 my salty teddy bear. This is my salty teddy bear. Give it a hug as well. All right, wishing you a bright, beautiful, and blessed day. Take care now.